Richard. I'm the manager of economic research at SA Kane Growers. Hi, I'm Mohammed Kadwa. I'm the industrial affairs manager at SA Kane Growers. The South African Cane Growers Association represents the interest of more than 20,000 sugarcane farmers in South Africa. Sugarcane is only growing in the KwaZulu Natal and Pumalanga provinces of South Africa due to climatic conditions and the location of sugar mills in South Africa. SA Cane Growers understands that the sugar industry has been included in the IEB geography syllabus for 2020. Essa Kangros has prepared a short presentation that will help you with your in investigations. Firstly, I will take you through an overview of the South African sugar industry and global markets, whilst Richard next to me will expand on farm level economics. Please visit SA Kangros website for more information and you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and the Gram. Instagram. Sugar is produced on a relatively minute scale from sorghum, dates and maple syrup. However, worldwide sugar crystals are mostly produced from sugarcane and sugar beet. Sugarcane is the world's biggest crop annually by some distance. Sucrose, which can be converted to sugar crystals, is also found in many fruits such as mangoes, grapes and apples, but in these crops it is either too small a percentage or it is extremely difficult to extract the sucrose into a sugar crystal. Sugar beet is mostly produced in the northern hemisphere, whilst sugarcane is grown between the tropics in most cases, except for South Africa. In our country, sugarcane is bred in a controlled research environment before being bulked out and released for commercial planting. Sugarcane produces both brown and white sugar, whilst sugar beet can only produce white sugar. There is currently no sugar beet production in South Africa. South Africa is a net exporter of sugar. This means that the country usually produces or supplies more than is consumed or demanded in South Africa. South Africa is on average for the past five years the 17th largest producer of sugar worldwide. Brazil, India, the European Union, Thailand as well as China produce almost two-thirds of the world's sugar production and therefore South Africa is very small in comparison. This slide shows the South African sugar industry. The blue areas in the northern KwaZulu-Natal and in Pumalanga are the irrigated areas and the green areas are the rain fed areas in KwaZulu Natal only. The rain fed areas are situated in KwaZulu Natal because of the climate. There's higher rainfall, up to a thousand millimeters of rain per annum, whereas the irrigated areas in the north and in Mpumalanga receive much lower rainfall and therefore need to be irrigated. The red dots that you can see are the various mills situated in these areas. There are about 365,000 hectares of sugarcane uh, in South Africa, producing 14 to 20 million tons of cane per annum. This is dependent on whether the year is a good year or a normal to a wet year. Drought will make it lower more towards the 14 million tons of sugar cane. From this 1.5 to 2.5 million tons of sugar is produced. On the right of the slide you can see some of the popular brands. Salati which comes from the northern irrigated areas. Hewlett's which originates from the north coast and Zululand and Ilovo which is situated in the south coast and the Midlands. This slide shows the various harvest cycles we have in the South African sugar industry. A harvest cycle 
is the time taken for the sugar cane to grow and then be harvested and sent into the mill. These different cycles are due to the various climates we have in South Africa. Top left picture you can see 12 month from Pumalanga cycle which is irrigated. You can see the overhead irrigation system on the go there. There are other irrigation systems like center pivots or even subsurface drip irrigation which has become very popular and water efficient. The middle picture you can see the sugar cane on the north coast or on the south coast. This is rain fed and can receive up to a thousand millimeters of rain per annum. This cane will take 12 to 22 months dependent on the area. There are many variances in this particular growing area. Mainly due to the amount of heat units received or the amount of rainfall received in a given year. The bottom picture is the Midlands. Due to the colder winters in this area and the lower rainfall, although still high enough to be rain fed, the cane grows for 20 to 24 months. So a farmer will only harvest once every two years, therefore only harvesting about half their farm per annum. Approximately 83.8% of the cane is delivered by commercial growers, 8.3% by small-scale growers, and around 8% by miller-owned estates. Farm staff are the most expensive cost for a cane grower costing approximately 30% of the budget. Cane transport, maintenance, fuels and lubricants make up approximately 26% while fertilizer and chemicals make up 24% of the total cost. Cane growers is part of a international benchmarking network. In the slide you can see that the cost of production is competitive relative to other cane producing countries in the world. The South African sugar industry plays a major part in the economies of KZN and Mpumalanga. One million people are dependent on the sugar industry for their livelihoods. Direct job numbers are 65,000 people, registered sugarcane farmers 20,000, Indirect employment, 350,000 people. The industry has an annual turnover of 14 billion rand, annual sugar production of 2.1 million tons, annual cane production of 19 million tons, and 362,000 hectares under cane. The health promotion levy, or commonly known as the sugar tax, is a tax on South African non-alcoholic sugar-sweetened beverages, or SSBs. The picture at the bottom shows the levels of sugar content before the sugar tax was implemented. The South African government implemented the HPL from the 1st of April 2018 at a rate that was more than double the retail price of sugar, and it is applicable for any SSB above 4 grams of sugar per 100 MLs. The big cost increase for SSB producers resulted in the reformulation of products to replace sugar with chemically made artificial sweeteners and also some SSB producers reduced their product sizes. The large drop in sugar content has been detrimental to the South African sugar industry because lower demand results in higher exports and exports are sold at a loss. Historically, about one quarter of South African produced sugar was sold to the SSB or health promotion levy impacted sector. This graph shows the impact that the HPL had on the sugar industry. In two years, 
the sugar industry lost demand of around 250,000 tons of sugar, which now has to be exported. The demand shift loss in exported sugar equates to about 1.5 billion rand of industry proceeds each year. In addition to the health promotion levy, the South African sugar industry is impacted by imports of sugar from other countries. Importers of sugar in South Africa are not part of the South African sugar industry but directly affect the industry because every sugar ton imported will increase exports, again sold at a loss. Importers bring in sugar when the South African government set sugar import tariff is insufficient. This slide firstly illustrates the amount of sugar produced in South Africa which is in green. Secondly, the blue and red lines add up to the green line and these two lines indicate the local and export sugar sales. There were little to no exports in the 2015-2016 and 2016-2017 seasons because of the long 2014-2016 drought that reduced the overall sugar crop size. Local market sales have reduced since 2017 due to the large volume of deep sea imports in 2017 and the HPL or the health promotion levy impacts again can be seen in subsequent seasons and therefore the local market has shifted from 2016 highs and is now at a new low. Good luck with your matric exams and please let us know if you have any further questions.